I will just talk and like give you a quick introduction if you want um, for anyone that's uh, just joined. So today is our first AMA with a Web3 collaboration and partnership with City Roots. And <laughs> yeah, live from the US, Josef Yell is here to talk a little bit about City Roots DAO, which I think is one of the more exciting projects and visionary projects in Web3 right now, because I think it addresses some of the most challenging is issues in the Web3 space, such as market manipulation, scams, rug pulls, and a very uh, yeah, current topic, the royalties. And today, with the launch of the public waitlist of City Roots, um, we thought it's a good time to have your Joseph here in contracting Discord to talk about a little bit about the project and get you all hooked up with the referral program. But I guess um, Joseph, it's uh, yeah your turn to speak now. I think you can explain your project a little bit more in detail. And yeah, happy to have you here. Excellent. It's a pleasure to be here for sure. Um, one quick question: Would you mind killing the push to talk on the channel? Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, just one second. Ah, okay. Should be fixed now. And how about that? Yeah, perfect. Okay, awesome. Now perfect. I can, uh, use two hands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, everyone, for jumping in, and uh, thank you, uh, Liv, for allowing us in here and uh, taking over your community for half an hour. <laughs> um, a pleasure. A pleasure, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So here's what we've got. We are City Roots DAO. We're here to uh, – we have an altruistic goal of, you know, just making the world a better place. And in doing so, uh, we, we more specifically want to focus on – uh, crypto and the, the Web3 ecosystem. And, you know, we got started because we started, we got together as a group and we're like, you know, we're going to get regulated um, really, really hard. <laughs> and it's not going to be great if, uh, if we can't self-mitigate a lot of the risk that's occurring in, uh, in Web3. So all the scams and and rug pulls and things like that, um, and the fraud. Um, so, how can we how can we start to mitigate that, and and what can we do to make the place uh, so Web three a safer, more inviting uh, place for the average everyday person? And um, so, we get together and we uh, realize, you know, if you want to do good in the uh, in the world, it's going to take some capital, um, and or people just doing things. So we said, well, we don't have a, a tremendous amount of capital, but we do have is a tremendous amount of uh, people that are willing to do the work. And so we all got together, created a DAO, and uh, we said, okay, what's going to be our first project? And we looked at the NFT marketplace ecosystem and saw that there was a tremendous amount missing, that the, the platforms that were out there uh, did not have the basics of a marketplace that you would expect in today's uh, in today's Web 2 world. And if Web 3 is supposed to be better than Web 2, uh, we need to absolutely at least make sure the platforms are on par with Web 2. So uh, we set out to build an NFT marketplace that would at least have the basic features you would expect, such as a review platform and a search platform. Today, all everything uh, in Web 3 is all word of mouth, uh, at least uh, at least in the NFT space, they just haven't had time to you know build those those platforms for um, for the the centralization of the the actual project launches themselves. So we said, all right, let's start there. Let's start with the search and the tagging and the review platform, and and turn it into a marketplace where people can list, buy, sell um, any NFT that they desire. So. Uh, and that's exactly what we did. That's how we got started. We uh, were formed by a DAO, and so we have a, a team of nine strategic members that are everything from our CPA to general counsel to, um, you know, the, the CTO and all that jazz. So we, we do have a real legal entity here, 
uh, behind this organization. And then the way that we operate is anyone can do work in our DAO. Um, all it requires is you to KYC and prove you're a real person for the accountability. Uh, and then if you've done that, you can be a developer, you can be a, a marketer, whatever you want to do for the DAO, you can do, and we pay you in bounties. So as we require things to get done, uh, we post a bounty for it in our native token, and that native token will be used as a, uh, a way so you can you can burn the token in order to exchange it for the revenue we earn as an organization. So as revenue, it, we're currently pre-revenue because we haven't launched any revenue positive uh, applications yet, but this will be launching here pretty soon, and, uh, and we expect it to uh, obviously generate revenue. When that occurs, again, you can burn the tokens that are earned in exchange for that revenue. It's called the harvest. So that's the model that we decided to go with, and it's led to us having 52 core contributors that have built the platform and in the data and um, you know the community, everything around it, and about 500 people that have actually earned the token total. And then we have about uh, 4,000 or so community members across the various platforms. So that's the background on City Roots DAO. Now let's get into the fun part. Uh, at least I, I, I like this part. <laughs> so this is the platform <laughs> called The Vault. <laughs> um, so like I said, The Vault is here to uh, provide an exploration, but enough talking, maybe we just go through an actual demo. Um, I will preface the demo with this is beta. This is very much a, uh, like we still have to reskin some things. So you're gonna see some things that are like, meh, like, uh, you know, this oblong circle here. Uh, so clearly we need to fix that, right? Like, so there's gonna be some things you'll see along the way of the demo that just aren't perfect and that's okay. We're just giving the demo anyway. So the functions are there, they're all working and, um, and we'll be uh, letting in some beta users. So if you're interested, by all means, feel free to uh, hit us up and, and jump in. So, all right. Let's start it off. So right now you're looking at a list. Uh, this is just the default Explore homepage of the vault. Um, it's just listing collections. Those collections have been approved um, and they have reviews on them. So this has 120 reviews of Board API Club. Uh, you can get to the links of the collection, go to the website, whatever it is you wanna go to, um, or you can favorite this collection. From here, you have the ability to say, well, that's nice. These are like the top quote unquote projects. Let's uh, let's find out something a little bit more custom. And I can come in here and say, well, show me some of the lists that I've created in the past or, or maybe that are like the default featured lists um, that show up. And maybe I want to look at like the top earning collections. So I'm going to I'm going to go to like top earning collections here. And you can see a completely different list. Now, this list is uh, set to only show me the earning collections, so collections where you can earn. And it's also set to, if I go to this little gear here, you can see it's set to, uh, if I go to market cap average, the last 30 days, oh, someone's got a mute, thank you. Uh, so it's set to the last 30 days and it's sort of descending for market cap average. So you're looking at the market cap average sort of descending uh, across all earning collections right now. And you get to see you know, the last 30 day average market cap, you get to see the total minted, the uh, last 30 day um, vol. So this is the number of sales and then maybe a, a burn history. Well, maybe we don't want to see burn history. Maybe we want to, uh, we want to pull that out and we want to pull in something else. Maybe we want to see the sum of the last 30 days of volume, right? And so now, boom, that's what we can see. It's an ETH. So, uh, you know, the last 30 days, price history and so you can create these customizable cards and then you can save them as a preset and come back to it at some other time in the future uh, well that's nice from an analytics side and what if uh, what if I want to do some searching here so what if I like uh, so let's let's pull out the earnings for a second so let's just remove that as a filter and let's go take a look at some of the other possibilities we have here I can come to community and say well I want to look at community projects but what kind and I can say, oh, I want to look at sports projects. Well, what kind? Oh, I want to look at soccer or basketball or any one of these different types of tags that we have hundreds of. <laughs> um, so if there's something that you can think of, you could just type it into the tags. 
Uh, or if you want to search through all of the tags, you can do that as well. Uh, but if I want to see, like, what are the top gambling projects, I can come here to Utility and say Gambler. And I guess we removed some of the tags. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> Happens. <laughs> this is what we get for VEDA. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, uh, so you can come in, you can say, all right, maybe let's, let's go to art for a second. I know we've, we've uh, I just tested that the other day. So we can say, all right, asset type, let's say maybe the asset type is a profile pick. So show me the top profile pick projects. And so boom, there you go. Now you've got the top profile pick projects by the you know the last 30 day market caps. And again, uh, you could come in and you could save this as top profile pick projects. Um, so you can come back to it later. It also gives you the review. It looks like a lot of these, um, they have reviews, but they don't have a top review. That's because no one's come in and actually voted on those reviews yet. So um, we'll get there. So. Okay, that's the explore page. So this gives you, uh, and also if you wanna say, you know, show me all the projects that have been verified. Verified is their KYB, meaning the organization has been a verified organization. Uh, we, we get like their operating agreement and, um, and their EIN number if they're in the US or, or depending on what country, like what makes them a legal entity in that country, as long as we can verify that then they become a verified collection. So you can actually search through that and see, you know, show me only the collections that are legal entities, have been verified legal entities on the platform. Um, Joseph, can I yes, uh, Absolutely, here? yeah. Yeah, my question was uh, also when I like researched about your project, um, I really liked the, the KYB process. I'm just wondering like how long does it take for um, like a, a project to get verified on your page? Because like, can they do this before Mint also, or is that something that they can do only after the Mint? That's a great question, absolutely. So we're putting a lot of focus on the pre-Mint process and, and making that process as easy as possible while still being as secure and as trustworthy and as possible. So um, it should take between 24 to 48 hours to get a project verified. Uh, there are scenarios in which it may take longer, but the, the average is pretty darn quick. Um, so, and then to answer the other question is, yes, we absolutely let projects come on here before they are uh, minting there. So anybody can, can create, uh, if you want to create a project you, today, you have to ask a curator um, to come in uh, that we have 12 curators. You just create a, a, a ticket in our discord and we'll create the project for you. We'll give you access so that you can manage that project. And you know you can add in the links, you can add in the tags and whatever else you want to do, and instantly become searchable. Um, so there is a bit of a review, a review process there as well, uh, but again, it's very quick. It usually takes between 24 to 48 hours to get a project on here, and it's completely free. We do not charge anything. Um, we're here on this part to just you know create a healthy ecosystem. That's awesome. That okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing that we do is, you know, if we get comments, if people come in, like they, they can click on the link and they can, um, oh, it's not in there right now. Uh, they can basically, there's a, um, a report this collection link. And if you report the collection, you can actually see, we might have some here that are confirmed closed. Uh, let's get rid of profile pick as a tag. And so you can see like these projects are confirmed closed. So if you ever actually pull one up and, and um, you know, try to look at it, you'll see that these projects are, um, we confirmed close, like uh, effectively they left the discord. Um, the process today is it's potentially like if, if they're, if they haven't put out any sort of information in a month, like if they haven't responded to anybody on Twitter or on discord for about a month, we tag it as potentially closed. Um, if, if they have explicitly come out and said, hey, we're no longer doing business, then naturally we can turn it to confirm close immediately. Otherwise, we wait about six months or so before we turn it to confirm close, um, between three and six months, um, just to give them the, the benefit of the doubt. Because sometimes community members come in and take it over and things like that. So there's, there's things that can happen and we wanna respect um, the projects as best as possible. Um, and then there's naturally potential scams and confirmed scams. Um, these are projects that have been identified as the contract itself being um, like having some kind of flaw in it. 
um, that is is designed to drain your money or something like that. So um, we have some interesting. We so actually we just can we now we can announce this because I just signed it yesterday. Um, we just got a partnership with Trust Check to actually um, start running. So they run machine learning in order to identify what uh, the security risk is for uh, collections. Uh, so, so for smart contracts on the Ethereum network. And so we're integrating with them right now to actually bring in a trust check score on a per collection basis. And that'll go into this approval process as well. And it'll become a lot more automated. Once all that's up and running, we can effectively open it up so that anybody can create a collection. It does website checkers automatically. And it does, so like all the links that you post will get checked and all of the, um, all of the smart contracts that you post will be checked as well. And so that should um, help significantly in keeping the community safe. So that'll be huge in, uh, in preventing scams, <laughs> which is our main goal. Um, all right, so now let's jump into like one of the fun ones here. Um, so this is the Explore experience. Um, let's jump into like, what does an actual collection look like? So I'm going to pop over to the Northern Guilds here for a second. Uh, this whole UI will change, but for now, this is uh, this works. So this is the Northern Guilds. Effectively, they have some reviews here. One of the reviews was written. It says token owned. This guy owned nine tokens when they wrote the review, and you know, that's what they said. It was written by this wallet ID here that didn't have an alias, but they left their name there. That's funny. Um, and then the project team actually responded here. So it's just like, you know, Google or Amazon where you can actually have the project team respond. Um, now what we're implementing, uh, we don't have this live yet, but, uh, we just implemented a KYC process. Um, going forward, we're going to require at least one member of the project team be KYC if they take ownership of the collection. Um, so if they effectively, you need to be uh, KYC on our platform, which is a means that we gather your uh, your country information and a government ID to ensure that you're a real person and hold you accountable if there's you know any fraud or whatnot. Um, so in order to access, uh, be on the team of a project like you see here and have the ability to edit this collection, um, those individuals will be required uh, or at least the first person, whoever has the edit access, will be required to KYC. Um, so that will, uh, and, and then that way they can add more people on their team and things like that, but at least one person can be held accountable. And, and in that, again, you can reply to reviews. The only way reviews will be written going forward as well are if you have KYC. So if you're a verified user on the platform, you get access to write reviews about projects. Um, and again, that's to uh, assure that our platform doesn't get botted like Amazon and Google um, and a lot of the reviews that are there. Uh, you know, we just bought some things on Amazon yesterday, uh, not yesterday, last week that were uh, complete crap when they had like the highest reviewed thing. And again, it's just, it's unfortunately it gets botted. So um, we're just taking a stand and saying, nope, we're going to make sure these are real people that are writing reviews. And, um, and if that comes at a cost, then so be it. Well, we're happy to pay that cost for the uh, for the trust because I, I we believe that in web3 what we're selling the future as is trust um you know we're in a trustless space and computers are trustless and we can only go so far because humans are trust based <laughs> so we're looking at building relationships and technology stacks that are focused on bringing trust back to humanity <laughs> that's uh, that's what we stand for now the other Awesome stuff. So you can see like what events are coming up for the project. Um, it's not currently working at the moment, but uh, effectively you get to see like is it, when's their launch, things like that. What are like some special dates that they might have for the project? Um, you get to see some basic analytics. And then the other thing that you can see is if we go to this about tab, you can actually see owners of Northern Guilds also bought. So you can see that there's 412 common owners of art blocks, 389 common owners of parallel. Um, and in, in future versions, this will be these little cards. So you'll be able to see this a lot more effectively, but, um, and like actually go to those collections and see, oh, okay. So these people, this community as a whole is mostly into these other things. And so you can really use this as a, as a research platform is kind of its, its purpose and, and really start to bring the research to you rather than you having to go and find and research everything yourself. 
Um, so therefore saving you a significant amount of time. And then lastly, the thing that we're adding in right now is, let's go to cool cats here. And so the last thing we're adding in right now is the actual NFT tab and bear with me on the UI, but um, where you'll actually be able to buy, sell, and, uh, and make offers on these collections. Um, as you do so, if you're a verified member, you will also have the ability to chat with other verified members. So you can just do wallet to wallet chat that will be on your profile. Uh, so let's go look at the profile. Um, on the profile, you're going to have a tab here that just says chat, and right, and it'll just show up very similar to how Twitter ho operates, and, and you can effectively just reach out to another person and chat with them, um, or go to your profile and hit all your chats, and then you'll have notifications and things like that. Um, for now, the profile uh, email is private, but yeah, hey, there's my email, everyone. Um, and you can go on to your profile and see uh, Discord and Twitter are both public information. If you hover over, it gives you the actual dev ID as well. So you can 100% verify that user um, is who they say they are on whatever platforms you need to do so. Um, and then you also get their wallet ID and you can see all the reviews that they've written. But then my favorite part is this affiliations tab. You can actually see what are all of the projects that they've been on. So I'm a project lead for City Roots. I'm a Discord admin for these other projects, Super Plastic. And you can kind of see whether, what are their general reviews for those projects uh, as well. So it really gives you an idea, almost like a resume, uh, a verified resume for this user. And, um, and I'm naturally, I'm verified here because I have KYC. So I just threw awesome. a lot at everybody. Let's go with questions and um, yeah. Okay, then uh, if no one else has a question, I would love to start. Uh, I really love um, the demo. Uh, thanks for, for showing it to us. I also think uh, it's the right time for such a marketplace, especially after the Blur launch and how popular it is right now, because the NFTs kind of are not the focus anymore. It's just like profit. You barely see the NFT you buy. Um, it's made for sweeping. And like what you're building with uh, City Roots is awesome because projects can also like fill out the information on your website and also like use it um, to show that they are serious and also make it easier for like new people to decide if a project is legit or not which i really like um i have a like a, my question would be is um the review part is there any benefit of a, a user to write a review um like personally is there any incentive to do so? Yes. So we are going to reopen our incentive program. Mm -hmm. um, it becomes, so th there's some difficulty here. Um, we have to balance it, right? Because at the end of the day, when you incentivize reviews, um, the quality of those reviews don't get incentivized, or it's very difficult to incentivize quality. Um, yeah. So, but we just went through, so we, we opened up an alpha last year to about a thousand people um, and for about six months. And we, uh, we learned the tricks of the trade, if you will, during that alpha of like how to incentivize quality. And so we're pretty confident we got it so that when we launch this um, and we launch the actual incentivization program that we are incentivizing the right mechanics um, in order to ensure the, the quality remains while still incentivizing reviews themselves. Okay, I, I see, I see. So, yes. Does anyone um, else have a question? You can also write it in the um, chat of the AMA stage voice chat. Uh, I can also read it uh, if you want. Um, my other question would be, uh, or not, like, not a question, but rather, um, while you like showcase the demo, I, I have to be honest, I was like thinking, <laughs> why hasn't this been done before? Because it makes so much <laughs> sense. It, it, it definitely uh, like makes so much sense. I mean, I am in the space for, I think, one year now, a little bit more than one year, like every day. 
and I've been using OpenSea, I've been using LuxRare, I've been using X2Y2, Blur. And now that I see this, I'm like wondering, wow, like we never got access to functionalities like this. And I also think the, these functionalities are very like helpful. And also like I can, like you can tell how, like how much it will improve the, the trust in the projects and in the space. So I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm really uh, happy that you just showcased us uh, city routes. Thank you, thank you. That means a lot. No, but, um, but uh, that was that was actually kind of my question as well because um, it feels like it's such a great idea, and I was I was just wondering like is there is there a tr is this a trick? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> why didn't people? No, I, it's a serious question. Like so so if if this is we all know e-commerce right, and we kind of got used to all of these functions that you're showing us. And it seems so normal in the in the yeah. web two world. So it feels like is there a reason why nobody else did this before? You know, <laughs> honestly, I think the reason may be because the FOMO of word of mouth is what's driving the value of NFTs today. Um, so a lot of these projects and influencers can get away with it, and in the space like that, the whole bull run last year. Um, or I guess a year and a half ago almost, yeah. um, started because it was all word of mouth and people just telling stories. Stories sell. And at the end of the day, if there was a platform like this, those stories uh, would have been put to a stop for many of the rug pulls and scams that occurred and the losses that occurred. Um, so I, it would not have stopped all of them by any means, but um, you know, if <laughs> every scam we stop uh, is a win in our book. And is the reason we're doing it. It's so uh, so interesting when you're used to OpenSea and uh, this marketplace, and now you see this. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's very cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's taken a lot of time to build and get it right. I think that's the other part is, um, you know. It, we really took all of the tools that people are building in the space in silo, and we just put them all into the same platform. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, that's kind of what we're <laughs> what we're building here. So the other thing, we'll I'll throw a little alpha out here. The other thing we're working on right now is um, we're we're working on signing some contracts to get um, onboarding and offboarding of fiat to crypto, so that uh, as as well as a custodial wallet integration um that will have the trust check off um capabilities so that we can actually have uh people interacting in web3 with a web2 experience and never have to know what a metamask is or how to sign in without like, like they're just going to sign in with google or sign in with facebook or whatever they want to sign in with um and just buy whatever it is they want to buy um with that web two experience without having to you know go through the whole signature process but they still get the safety of web three and the transparency of web three while operating as if they're you know still in the web two way so that's that's something we're working on um it's it's definitely a little ways out that's for sure but um we're getting there for sure it's on our roadmap and it's uh something we're gonna achieve yeah that's that's awesome there's also like something that hasn't been done right now right i think on OpenSea you can buy with a credit card but you can't sell it right correct yeah so uh you can buy with a credit card but you can't offboard your fiat uh um, yeah. if you have it in a wallet or something like that so you have to use coinbase or whatever it is so we're looking to become the one-stop shop and then our focus here becomes so let's let's talk about like projects that are launching right um one of the things that we're going to add into the platform um and we've already started is uh, are you a flipper? Are you a whale? Are you a, like, what's your persona? Um, and from there, what we can do is allow project teams um, to be able to search people themselves and like the tags of people. So show me all of the whales and then sort it by only whales that have 50 ETH in their wallet right now. And then, you know, X or 50 ETH of, of NFTs or whatever it is. And and then what they'll be able to do is actually through that chat feature, they'll be able to invite that person to their wallet. So this is gonna come alongside of like, so let's go to Bardate for a second. So if we go here and we pull in, 
me go back to the about tab for a second. So, you know, other deed, the, so these guys, so a lot of these owners, uh, what we'll do is we'll start to write in like, oh, these guys are into, uh, maybe they're, they're into like 30 different sports NFTs. And so that specific wallet ID, um, as you're, sorry, I should be on the profile. So as you're on a profile specifically, there'll be a like about this user tab and uh, about this user will have a lot of metrics around, you know, again, maybe they are into like 30 sports NFTs and then they're into, you know, a hundred different gambling NFTs. And um, when's the first time they bought an NFT? When's the last time they bought an NFT? What's the, how much money have they spent? How much money have they made? So just all, because all that data is public on chain, uh, bringing that, that data into a profile, into a single view here, and then um, uh, mixing it with the tagging capabilities so that if I'm, let's, let's go a little bit more altruistically, you know, if I'm launching a project to go clean up the beaches in our country, um, you know, and, and there's um, someone that's into, um, it, in, into that kind of, uh, like there, there's, there's NFTs for that. So if, if we start tagging some of those NFTs, like if we go over to the, uh, the uh, I think it's under community and sustainability. So if we go over to like, let's say poverty prevention, like show me all of the, the people that own an NFT that's tagged as poverty, poverty prevention. And then I can invite them to my project that's launching a new NFT. And I guess I can, uh, and they can, they can reject that or they can accept it. And um, it gives you a way to market to target audiences significantly more effectively than anywhere else so um and they can just they can turn i mean people people will have the option to turn it off right so okay, uh, okay. If, they, if they if they don't want to receive notifications or invites or maybe they only want to receive notifications for poverty prevention nfts you know like that's that's going to be up to the end user and yeah. and uh that that gives you the control as to like yeah i really do only want to see things in my area i don't want to see gambling nfts i could care less but if you're going to send me anything in the sustainability like yes i will i will absolutely entertain those thoughts and, and um, ideas awesome very very awesome <laughs> i can't wait to to uh, yeah use it um more frequently in the future me too man <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone uh, with a question? I saw some people unmuted their mic um, before. Is, are there any open questions? No, maybe not really a question. It's more of more of a wondering because um, as you speak, it all it all makes sense. It, it all looks good, but at the at the other hand, you you've already mentioned that um, the whole sphere is kind of based on this hype and stories. And so, and, and what you're of offering is kind of practical, but also is, you know, it's, it's not probably as exciting as many of the other projects in the sense that, you know, it's, it's really down to earth. <laughs> um, do you have a story? Something, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, oh, sorry. What was that last part? No, 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 something, you know, exciting, something fun, something not, not, uh, I'm gonna, you know, be able to search stuff because it sounds great, you know, but it, it doesn't stand for great stories. So I'm just wondering. Yeah, <laughs> um, absolutely. So our, so we have more than, than just the vault from City Roots Dow, right? So everything I just showed you is everything related to the vault, um, you know, but as we, as we, uh, we as City Roots Dow, um, we're actually going to be launching a uh, a new project, a PFP project that we haven't even really, like, this is uh, the first uh -huh. announcement that people are going to hear about. Um, and that will be launching here very, very shortly. I'm not going to give any dates, but um, we've been planning it for a while. So it's um, coming to reality, and, and we'll be having uh, the City Roots PFP um will be coming and i'm yeah i'm super excited for that so where it's all about the art and and um giving something for people to connect with at the city roots layer especially as you um get verified as a user um it kind of becomes like your quote-unquote profile id uh, or passport 
um, to some degree of being a citizen of City Roots DAO. That's awesome. Yeah, that and sounds the... like, a, like an exciting story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We're so the way we're going to launch it is pretty exciting. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, it will be there. There's going to be some some fun little uh, Easter eggs over the. I, I, I'd say check the vault waitlist page in about a week. That's going to be my my guess. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, for everyone that like wants to like uh, do more research on City Roots or join the Discord or look at the Twitter, I post the links again in the general chat, so you can join the Discord and get updated on like any announcements um, from City Roots, um, so you don't miss um, like the the launch and the the profile picture collection. And then ETA. Uh... In your announcements, can you post the uh, that uh, the referral link there that you have? Yeah, sure. Just give so me that, a second. So that people can uh, sign up for the waitlist and request beta access to the platform as well. With that. Link. Yeah, I will um, post this in a bit. Let me just uh, like I need to formulate a little bit um, to yeah, announce, no and then I will share the link for everyone so you can join. Um, and yeah. Thank you, um, Joseph. Thanks a lot for the demo. I am personally like very excited for this. I'm very happy that you, um, like one of your community members, came forward to us to connect us, and I'm very glad that you're now here. That you just uh, showed a little bit about the vault, about city routes, and yeah, I'm very excited for the future. Ditto, man. I truly appreciate the uh, the time of everyone, and thank you for the invite. We're here if anyone has questions. Yeah, I think I think no questions, right? Excellent. <laughs> All right, guys, this is uh, Leva. Anything else, or should we just? you know, wrap up and go sign up for the beta. Yeah, I will um, post the link in a bit.